Hey everyone, this is Chad from Soundflow. In this video, we will learn how to sign up for a new Soundflow trial, install the Soundflow application, and set up Soundflow to control Ableton with an iPhone in less than 10 minutes. The first step is to go to soundflow.org in your browser. Then click the white button that says get 30 days for free. On this sign up page, enter your name, followed by the email address that you want to use with Soundflow, and of course, choose a strong password for your account. Then click Create Account. From here, you'll be prompted to verify your email address. After clicking the verification link in your email, you'll be presented with a few questions to help us get to know you better. Answer these questions and then you'll be taken to your Soundflow account home. At this point, you've successfully created your Soundflow account. To start your free 30-day trial of Soundflow Cloud Pro, click the white button here. Once the trial is activated, the next step is to download the most recent installer of Soundflow at the bottom of this page. I've now downloaded the latest Soundflow installer, which I have on my desktop. To begin the installation, double-click the installer and follow the instructions on screen. If you're asked for your macOS password, please fill it in so the installer can continue. When the installer is complete, you'll see a green check mark and the Soundflow app will pop up in the top right corner of your screen. We now need to allow a few permissions on macOS so that Soundflow can automate tasks for you. Click the step number one button, and then in the pop-up window, click the Open System Settings button from the Accessibility Access dialog. We now have the Privacy and Security Settings window open. Scroll down to find Soundflow on this list and ensure its access is toggled to on. After granting accessibility permissions, click step number three from Soundflow's menu bar app. On some versions of macOS, including macOS Sequoia, you will also be prompted to grant local network access. This is another setting found in privacy and security settings on macOS and is necessary for Soundflow to run correctly on macOS Sequoia. You can now close the system settings window. Next, from the Soundflow menu bar app, click sign in, and then enter your email and password, and finally click the blue login button. Once logged in, click open Soundflow in the top left corner of the Soundflow menu bar app. This will launch the Soundflow editor and bring you to the welcome screen. The first screen displays some global shortcuts Soundflow has set up for you. For example, you can always use Control F1 to open the Soundflow editor. Let's click the blue next button to continue the setup. You can choose which official integrations you want to install with Soundflow on the next page. You have the option to install one or multiple Soundflow integrations. The Ableton Live integration is not included on this list as it is currently in public beta. We'll cover how to install the Ableton Live integration later in this video, but for now, I'll choose a few integrations and click Get Started to continue. You'll now be presented with Soundflow's Quick Start Guide. This guide will help you set up your account for using Soundflow with a Stream Deck, iPad, iPhone, or Android device. First, click Next to continue the setup. On this page, you can choose which device you want to use with Soundflow. For this video, I'll set up Soundflow with an iPhone. You can install the free companion app for iOS and Android devices from your App Store. And then once installed, click the Next button in the Soundflow editor to continue the setup. Ensure your device is on the same Wi-Fi network as your computer running Soundflow so that Soundflow can connect correctly. I've launched the Soundflow app and my computer is showing up so I can click the computer name from my phone to connect. Once connected, you can continue with the quick start guide. Soundflow has now set up some default content in your account and these decks and macros serve as good examples for how to use Soundflow. The rest of the quick start guide will show you more of these features, but I'll skip over this for now so we can get into using Ableton Live. Once you reach the final dialog, you've completed the setup of Soundflow. The Soundflow Quick Start Guide is now completed in the Get Started with Soundflow checklist in the bottom right corner. I'd encourage you to complete the rest of the tutorials in this checklist, beginning with the intro tour. These will help you understand how Soundflow is laid out and set you up to start making your own macros. To install the Ableton Live integration public beta, head over to the store by clicking the store button at the top of the Soundflow editor. From here, navigate to the official Soundflow integrations. And all we need to do is click Install on this package and then click Go to Package. Now that the Ableton Live integration has been added to our account, you'll notice the package documentation includes a few more setup instructions. Let's go ahead and open Ableton Live 12 and get Soundflow connected. 
Once Ableton opens, we can go to the Ableton Live settings from the menu bar, and then we'll navigate to Link, Tempo, and MIDI settings. Here, we need to set up the Soundflow MIDI control surface. First, we'll find an empty slot for the control surface and select Soundflow from the list. Next, we'll set the input of this control surface to Soundflow Ableton output. And then we'll set the output of this control surface to Soundflow Ableton input. Now we can close the settings window and the Soundflow Ableton Live integration is fully set up. I'll head back to Soundflow and we can start exploring the package. The Ableton Live integration has over 850 commands and over 40 decks ready to use. To get started, I'll show the Ableton main deck on my iPhone by selecting the deck in the Soundflow editor. Then using the device drop down to select Chad's iPhone and then I'll click show deck. The deck now appears on the iOS app. Now I can switch back to live and start adding some audio effects or possibly some instrument devices or start coloring some tracks. Great. Now you'll notice that I can't currently edit the main deck from within the Ableton package. To edit the provided decks, I'll need to use the Make Editable Copy button in the deck editor and copy this deck to my default package. Now I can move commands or delete them, and most importantly, I can add my own commands. So I can add this macro to my custom Ableton deck, and then I can configure the macro to load an instance of FabFilter Pro Q4 to my selected track in Ableton. I'll show this version of the deck on my iPhone, and maybe I'll select a new track for this, run the macro, and there it is. Pro-Q4 has been added to my track. You can learn more about designing custom decks with Soundflow from our other tutorials. Check out our Learning Soundflow playlist on YouTube for more videos on creating macros, setting up stream decks, and getting the most out of Soundflow. I hope you have a great experience using Soundflow. Please know that you can always get help by asking questions in our forum or by clicking one of the red Need Help buttons from the Soundflow app. The intro tour we mentioned will show you how this works. Thanks for watching, and we hope you enjoy using Soundflow with Ableton Live. Mm -hmm.